Welcome back to another video on Cisco Packet Tracer. In this video, I'm going to be quickly going over how to set up OSPF or Open Shortest Path First Routing Protocol. You'll see here, it's actually quite easy to set up. There's very few commands required. First things first, right? We have our two routers, each with their own subsequent network. They're both 192 networks, but this is our dot zero network over here on the left. And over here on our right, the green network is our dot one network. And these are determined by the third octets. This is a classroom assignment. The students will have to set this up exactly as such. However, everybody else, feel free to just follow along as this is a pretty generic generic tutorial for setting up OSPF. For this tutorial, we are going to be needing a third router here. And this router, we name this to just R0. And after that, we want to set up our connection. So there to there and from here to here. And it's all red right now because remember, routing ports are shut by default. So we do need to do a little bit of configuration here. I want to label our networks because we just added two new networks. I need you guys to think about each network as its own point to point connection, right? So in between these two routers, this is a network. In between these two routers, this is a network. And then we have our two original networks. As you can see, we have several different networks here and we need to label them. So we need to give this one an IP set and we're gonna give this one an IP set. This is gonna be our 10 network. So we're just gonna give this an IP of 10.0.0.0. And this is gonna be a slash 30, right? We only need two addresses, so slash 30 is fine. And this is going to be our 11 network. So 11.0.0.0. And this is also a slash 30. I'm gonna go into our router one configuration here. Go to the CLI, come in and put in my username and password that I've set up. Cisco123 for the student password. Go ahead and go into configuration terminal. And here, if we do show run really fast, you'll see that the port connecting here is, it should be 002, which is this one right here. Let's go ahead and set that up right now. So interface G0 slash 0 slash 2. I'm gonna start with no shut. Now we're gonna give it the IP address. So IP address 10.0.0.1.255.255.255.252 as this is our slash 30 subnet. Let's go ahead and close out of that for now. We come into our router zero and set up essentially the same thing. Now we've already talked about how to set up our routers properly. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about that for this. And it's gonna pretty much stay with a blank configuration and then configuration terminal. And now we're gonna go into our G0 slash 0 slash 0, which interface G0 slash 0 slash 0, which is our interface connecting to router one. No shut, first of all. And we're gonna give that IP address 10.0.0.2 and 255.255.255.255. .255 .255 .255. Two. All right, go ahead and exit out of that. And we're gonna go into the next port up, which is 001. For that, we're gonna say no shut and then IP address 11.0.0.2, for our slash 30 over here. And I actually messed up on router one. We don't want this on 002. We want to set this up on 001. So interface G0 slash 0 slash one, uh, no shut IP address 10.0.0.2. 255.255.255.255.252 and that overlaps. So let me go ahead and just default our interface G0 slash 0 slash 2 and try this again. All right. So now if we go ahead and try to ping our point to point connection here, we're on router one. So I'm going to type in, we got out of the interface first. So do ping 10.0.0.2. We should have no problem pinging. We might lose one or two packets, but we're good. Now, one thing I want to point out, do show IP route. This is going to show us our routing table. You can see right here, we've got a couple of different things. And a lot of these are directly connected, right? We see that here. And we know right away that we're part of our 192.168.0 network because this router is connected directly to that network. We also know the same thing about our 10 network because we are directly participating in the 10 network. Let's set up our router two really quick go into our cli and matthew.wester cisco123 and configure terminal all right so now we want to go into interface g0 slash 0 slash 1 no shut ip address 11.0.0.1 and this is our slash 30 as well so it's about 252. now what we want to do we want to start the actual ospf configuration but this is very simple realistically we just want to declare on every single router each network that that router is directly attached to for our router zero you see that it is directly attached to the 10 network and the 11 network. Now our router zero is not directly connected to either of our 192 networks. So we're not gonna worry about that. Router one is directly connected to the 10 network and the 192.0 network. So we need to declare those two networks for this one. And then same thing over here for router two, it's connected to these two networks over here. So we just need to declare the specific networks that it is attached to. So we're gonna go onto our router one. We're gonna start here. We're gonna type in router OSPF one. This is just the identification number on the configuration in case you need to have multiple OSPF configurations on each router. This does not need to be the same across the router. However, the area numbers do need to be the same. 
Keep in mind, if you only are using one OSPF area, you have to use OSPF area zero. And if you are using multiple areas, you have to have at least one area zero still. Now that that's out of the way, we're going to go ahead and start doing our actual configuration here, which the command for this is pretty simple. It's just network. So we need to declare the 10 network and this 192 network. We're going to start with the 192. Network 192.168.0. That is zero and it is a slash 24. Here we can either put our wildcard mask or our subnet mask. Our wildcard mask is just the inverted form of a subnet mask. So where all of the bits in a 255 octet are turned on, the wildcard version would be turned off. So if our subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 for a slash 24, the wildcard is just the reverse of that, which would be 0.0.0.255. Hopefully that makes sense. But like I said, uh, these routers are actually able to convert it for you. So all we have to do is put our subnet mask here. So we're just going to do that. And then we declare our area zero. Now what we want to say, we want to do the same thing for our 10 network. So network 10.0.0.0. And this is a slash 30. We're going to put 255.255.255.252 area zero. And okay, that's it for router one. We're going to hop over to router zero. And this is the one that's connected to the 10 network and the 11 network. So those are the two we're going to declare. Go ahead and exit out of this and type in router OSPF one network 10.0.0.0.255.255.255.252 and area zero and the same same thing, but we're going to come back here and we're going to change this 10 to 11. Finish up with that and come over here to router 2 and router OSPF 1 network. This one is connected to the 11 network here, as well as our second 192 network. So we're going to go ahead and declare the 192 one first. 192.168.1.0. And this is our 24 network as well, slash 24. So it's a dot zero on the subnet mask and area zero. And then the 11 network as well. 11.0.0.0. And then this is our slash 30 network and then area zero. Okay. So now do show IP route again, because right now it's not actually working yet. We're not doing anything. And the reason for that is OSPF has to have a gateway of last resort. We need to have some sort of a static route set up in place. And for this, we're going to use a quad zero route. Now what a gateway of last resort does when router one is generating a packet and it doesn't know where to go directly on its routing table, it doesn't have that information. A gateway of last resort means that we're going to designate a specific port as an exit port, right? So when this router gets confused and it doesn't know where to send the packet, it's going to default to our gateway of last resort interface and it's going to shoot it out that way and hope that the next router along might know where to go. So in our case here, router one's gateway of last resort is whatever port is facing towards our network hub. In our case, router zero here, because anything that we don't know about, we want to just shoot out this way. So let's go ahead and set that up right now. For that, we want to get out of here and we're going to type in IP route and we're doing a quad zero route, which is just 0.0.0.0. .0 and same thing for the subnet mask, G0 slash zero slash one. And this is just giving us a little warning, a default route without gateway, if not a point to point interface may impact performance. Now we know that this is a point to point, so performance shouldn't be affected at all. What this is really saying, a quad zero route is saying any IP address under the sun is going out this interface, or in our case, 001. We do not set up our gateway of last resort on our hub router. Let's say we're trying to ping one of these computers, right? And it gets here to router zero from router two, and our gateway of last resort is pointed back towards router two. This router doesn't know about these computers. And so when it's confused, it's going to attempt to send it at the gateway of last resort. Resort. And if that is pointing this way, it's just going to come back here. And then this one's going to send it back here. And this one's going to send it back here. And that causes a routing loop, which is ultimately going to fail. And it's just going to eat up bandwidth from both devices, slowing down our network. Coming back to router two, we're going to set up the same static route configuration. So that's just IP route, our quad zero. And then same thing for the subnet mask, meaning any IP address under the sun. And we're going to send it out of G0 slash zero slash one. And now if we do show IP route, we now see an O here as well as a new network. And we see another one right here. The O stands for OSPF, which means that our routing table has learned something from our routing protocol. So now router two knows about the 10 network and it also knows about our 192.0 network, which it did not before. And it knows this because OSPF is working. Now each of these routers is sharing all of the information on its routing table with every single other OSPF router within the OSPF area. And that is actually it. That's all you need to know about OSPF. It's very simple. Like I said, I hope this video is helpful. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and just throw it down below. Uh, the students in the class, you have the discord information. Thanks for watching. Bye.